Hey, what's going on guys? This is Mike and in this Mobox video, we're going to be taking a look at perspective using a camera in After Effects. Uh, with this tool, you could do a number of different things. You could change the depth of field. Um, you can easily add blur to um, objects. So we're just going to name this Tutorial 9, which I believe is the tutorial we're on. We're going to keep this down to maybe five seconds. Uh, 60 frames a second, 1080p, looks good. The background could be black, whatever. So uh, we're just gonna create a background layer. Layer, new, solid, and we're gonna make it kind of just off-white, just to give it some character. Just hit okay. And uh, let's go ahead and actually just lock this layer so we can't mess with it. Um, and we'll, before we lock it, we should probably rename it to background, and then we'll lock it. That way we can't grab it and drag it and accidentally move it. So we're going to create some circles here. So basically, I'll just give you kind of a rundown of exactly how this tool works and exactly um, kind of what you could do with it. So right here, you'll notice that this, when I hover over this little cube, it says 3D layer allows the layer to be multiplied or manipulated in three dimensions. So I made three, three circles and I'm just going to um, turn that on for all three of these. So when you notice here is that you can move it in the X and Y, but you can also move it in the Z direction. And it's kind of hard to see from this view. Um, but down here, you could actually change the view. So you could do two views, two views, vertical, four views, whatever. And it kind of shows you the object in all of the dimensions. So um, that could be useful, um, which we will use. So if you notice in, in the beginning, um, I showed kind of like it, the perspective changing. And as the camera moves, you kind of uh, planets come into view. So um, what we'll do here is I'll just kind of show you how I, how I did that. So we're going to, I guess, change the color of all these. So we have a red one. We'll make a, I don't know, it's almost black one. And then we'll make maybe, I don't know what's a good color. Maybe a dark kind of bluish color like that. And we'll just kind of space these out a little bit um, like that. So another layer we're going to need to use is a camera layer. So you just go up to layer, new, whoa, layer, new, camera. And there's a lot of tools here that people that, that film all the time will know about. But basically all you need to know is that if the camera's pointed here, this is this is what it what you'll see um, in the camera lens. And then there's also a focal length. So you might be able to see here, but the focal length might be pulled forward, meaning things in the background are blurry, things in the front are blurry, um, but things at that focal length will be in focus. So we'll just hit okay, this stuff looks fine to me. Um, some things that people like to do, maybe change the node, but but this is this is fine for this um, basic tutorial. So um, I'm just gonna clear this notification. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here again, I'm gonna change the view to two views, and I'm gonna take this this sphere or this well it's actually just a circle and I'm gonna drag it out to maybe right there so basically what we just did is let me make this a little bit more clear is you can see on the right hand side is as I drag this out in the Z direction it, it changes its position um, towards the camera and we can not actually see it in the camera so let's say we take this object and we move it to let's say right there um, they're both in focus, and the reason why this is this is still in focus is because we need to do some do some editing to this camera here. So when we open it up, we can see the camera options, and we want to turn depth of field on. And what that does is essentially it it creates a depth of field slider, and you can change the distance here. Oh, so that's the focal distance and the aperture, and the aperture affects how much um, how much blur you get um, when it when it when it's not in focus. If it's all the way down, you don't get any blur. Um, if it's all the way up, you get more blur. So um, basically, now what, what what you could do is essentially, um, if if you come back down to two view, and you move the camera, you could you you see here on this. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. Is that whoa? Don't want to change that in the y direction. It's kind of hard to do it from this far away. But you could see that as I move the camera farther and closer, things come in and out of focus. And you could do this. Oh, by the way. Um, it's in focus because the focal length is at the back of the camera, but if I change the focus distance, um, you could also kind of get an effect there. Um, let's say there's two objects really close, you just want to change the focal distance, you don't necessarily have to move the whole camera. Um, but to get motion, to make it appear that that you know the planets are in space or the circles are in space and you need to move, um, you're going to want to just move the whole camera. 
So um, that's kind of a rundown of exactly what what you get when you um, when you set this up. So I'm going to move this this planet all the way out here, and it doesn't necessarily have to be that far away. I'm just going to move this one. Maybe right there. You notice that this is kind of glitchy. I don't know in this version of After Effects why it is so glitchy, but it but it just is. So uh, we're going to move this camera back. Um, we want we want this to be in full focus. And what you could do is here on the right or on the left, you could zoom in and kind of see just how in focus is it, it is, and it, and it looks pretty good. So what we're going to do is we'll create a keyframe here, and we'll create a keyframe over here um, for. Focus, distance, no, position. We want this camera to move. So we'll do P on the keyboard. And now we can change the position. So we'll go to one second and we'll change this position so the blue planet planet comes into, into focus. And you can see here that I'm going to zoom in just a little bit and just kind of play with the position just a tad, just so we kind of get it to be exactly where we need it to be. And by the way, if you hold control, it gives it's a lot more precise when you slide this. So what I'm doing, I'm just cl clicking this and sliding it. When I hold, if I don't hit control, it it goes like that. But if I hold control, it goes more like that. So I'm just heads up. So you can see there that whoa, what's going on? The camera flipped. I don't know why the camera flips. The camera always flips from the first frame. So what I do is, is I basically set this up, and I'm just going to copy these keyframes here. Whoa, Control C, Control V. And then move the camera back, and then I'll just I'll just fix the camera at the very end. Again, um, I'm kind of an unexceptional motion graphics guy, uh, but but these are just things that I've learned, and, and they should help you. Um, but that's something I noticed. I don't know why that camera flips. So basically, once I fix it, I'm just going to come to this first keyframe, delete the keyframe, and you'll see that things are still like broken. So I'm going to copy this keyframe. And I'll paste it there, and then I'll just move the camera back. And you see how it's how it's glitching like that. I don't I don't know why it does that. I'll, I'll be honest, I don't. Um, I believe that it's that it's just an issue with After Effects, or my ability to use After Effects. So after I pasted that there, it should be fine, and it is. So that's just basically one simple tool. Um, you could add some some smoother to this. So I could just highlight them, right click. Um, easy, easy ease will do, and that should kind of give you some clean motion in and out. Um, by the way, another trick I want to let you know is that when you sometimes when you come into one view, um, this could be changed to front, and you don't want that. Um, you want to make sure it's on active camera because when you go to render it, it, it doesn't work. It 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 just doesn't work. So um, that's how that works. And by the way, you could change the blurriness on here. Um, just by coming in here and messing with all these. If you're a camera dude, you'll know what most of these mean, and you can get a lot more use out of this. But I just want to make make this aware um, that you could use that you could actually use this. See if when I change the blur amount, um, that also that also affects it. But so does the aperture. So um, I don't know. They just have different effects. By the way, it's if you notice when I raise the aperture up, it kind of almost looks like a square. You could change that um, by changing the aperture size. Um, an octagon kind of makes it more circular because there's eight sides um, and then you could even make it rounder um, But by the way, uh, this takes a long time to render so um, That's just a quick look at do it using perspective tools with the camera in After Effects. Anyways guys I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped. Anyways guys, it's been Mike. Thanks for watching